remember Google Glass? Well, at the last Google I.O. they showed a prototype of essentially a new model of the device, with some really cool use cases. But that's obviously just a demo, so since that's what I do on this channel, here's a concept of how I think the next Google Glass will actually be like. Spoiler, not like that. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, at their last software presentation, Google announced tons of features having to do with artificial intelligence, obviously, that's pretty much the core of their business, and AR, or augmented reality. In essence, augmented reality is adding some kind of information, or to use the more technical term, stuff, to what you would normally see in the real world. A really weird but practical example they made at that presentation is the ability to scan something like a supermarket shelf, visually highlighting the products that fit the user's request, like show me a specific type of chocolate bar. And yes, I know that some may disagree with this definition of AR I gave you, saying that real AR is specifically about showing virtual objects as if they were really there, taking care of perspective and distance, but for the sake of simplicity I'm going to call everything AR. Augmented reality augments reality, whereas virtual reality uses a headset of some kind to completely replace what the user would see with a virtual environment. Stuff like the MetaQuest or PlayStation VR is virtual reality, but this video is about augmented reality. Unlike VR, which already found a form factor to experience it that makes sense, which is VR headsets, AR is still mainly being used with phones and tablets. There already are some really cool applications for augmented reality you can try right now, like navigating a city, seeing directions and indications overlaid on top of the real buildings. But unfortunately, they are still all bound to our phone's displays, which are pretty tiny windows for augmented reality. That's why I and many others believe that the future of AR is glasses, and apparently Google agrees. They showed a prototype of a new pair of augmented reality glasses, which in the demo they showed were able to not only do a live translation of what a person was saying, but also to show that translation in the form of text directly in the user's view. Now, obviously this is not the first time Google tries something like that. You probably remember the Google Glass, one of Google's biggest flops. Google Glass flopped hard, and if they want to make a successful product this time, they have to understand what went wrong. So what went wrong? Well, to start, they costed $1500, at a time when flagship iPhones were still selling for $700. With inflation for Google Glass, that would be about $1,900 in today's money. Not exactly cheap. Also, it's not like you could just go to the store and buy them. At the start, they were only made available to developers. Then Google started the Explorer program, which meant you needed an invite for the privilege to give Google $1,500, and then stuff happened. Even though there barely were any Glass users around, people started getting worried about them. One of the main features of Google Glass was the camera, a big camera that was always pointed at people and there was no way of telling whether you were recording stuff with them or not. This caused an entire movement against Google Class. Some stores and even cinemas banned them, for pretty obvious reasons. But in general, people were scared of Class. The battery also wasn't that great, especially if you were using them to record video. But apparently the new Enterprise Edition should last about 8 hours according to Google. So they kinda fixed this problem in the end. There's also the fact that they looked kinda weird. Now, I don't think that was actually the main reason why they flopped to be honest. The same was said about AirPods if you remember. I'm confident that with a good product, that works well, and does everything it needs to do, people would go past a design that doesn't perfectly resemble the glasses they are used to. It cannot be too weird or massive. But I don't think people will just refuse to buy anything until they look just like basic Raven. So, to recap, to finally have some form of success, the new Google Glass must cost less. I'd say for a first gen product, $9.99 is a reasonable price, and obviously people must have a way to actually buy them. They have to fix the camera problem, they have to look decent enough, and they have to have some actually useful features beyond just taking photos and videos, because the Ray-Ban stories already do that and they cost $300. Taking all of this into account, I made a concept. So, I tried to make something that looked similar enough to glasses, but I had to make some adjustments. This is like the 10th time I'm rewriting this part because it's really complex to explain. The reason why I didn't just make them look like normal glasses, even though companies like Unreal kinda proved it's possible, and no, they did not sponsor me, is because from my understanding, it isn't really. At least for now. Even though the Unreal Air, which in case you don't know what I'm talking about, is a pair of AR glasses whose main selling point is looking 
just like normal sunglasses succeeded at their mission when looked in isolation because yeah they could definitely be mistaken for normal glasses if you found them on a table or something because of how their display technology works this illusion kinda breaks when you wear them and they are much more distant from your face than any other normal pair of glasses would be they look kinda weird I'm not going too much in detail about how I came up with this design because it would be immensely boring this video is already pretty long just consider that the lenses are like this because they needed to be taller because the glasses themselves should sit a bit taller on the user's face than normal glasses would and that the arms of the glasses have this shape where they wrap around the head of the user both for weight distribution and because that's where I'm envisioning a good chunk of the hardware could be placed essentially meta did it with the Quest Pro so I'm doing it as well on the right temple I put a touchpad this is not the most ideal way to control a product like this but again I wanted this concept to be somewhat realistic the original Google Glass also had a touchpad like this one but it controlled differently I guess it's finally time to talk about the UI so the UI made is pretty simple but there's a reason for that there's this almost empty screen with only the status bar which is the very first screen the users will see when waking up the device to avoid filling their view instantly because remember this is an AR device it has stuff directly on top of what the user would normally see when designing UIs for such devices it's really important to think carefully about where the info will be displayed and how much space it'll take because of the touchpad shape the main way of interacting with it would be by swiping along the horizontal axis for this reason in my concept all the apps and interfaces were designed to be scrolled horizontally by swiping vertically instead you can switch apps oh right the apps the entire reason why you would even want to buy this device in the first place i designed a couple of them and they're all very simplistic not because a similar device wouldn't be able to handle more complex apps but because i imagine that at first the various companies launching smart glasses probably are not going to market them directly as smartphone replacements i'm predicting that the first models will mainly be meant to test the waters to understand the major problems and to let people get accustomed with the idea of smart glasses it's a vastly different user experience for somebody that only knows smartphones. It might make sense to start simple, but even with only simplistic apps, at least in terms of how and how much they can be controlled, I can definitely see the potential for some killer features. Let's start from what Google teased at the event. Live translation that appears in front of your eyes. Do I even have to explain how cool that would be? It's technically already doable with phones, sure, but in this case the translation can directly appear in front of you like subtitles. You'd barely have to do anything and you'd be able to look at the other person while you're reading what is being said to you. And in case the other person also had a device like this, you'd essentially be able to do a normal conversation in your own respective languages with translation that appear instantly. And why stop at spoken language? You'd be able to read something and the translation would appear on top of the real text. Many things we can already do on phones would still benefit a lot from such a form factor. Even very basic apps would be better if you didn't have to take your phone phone out of the pocket to consult them. What about video? There is a reason if Unreal dedicated an entire device to pretty much that. With smart glasses you can essentially simulate the experience of a much bigger screen. Even the best hypothetical foldable or rollable phones wouldn't get close. Then there's also the Google Assistant. Imagine asking something and seeing the answer in front of you pretty much immediately. This was another of the main features of the original Google Glass, but considering all the improvements we've had over the last years, it would definitely be a better experience. And what about the stuff you can't even do on phones. Smart glasses would be able to do so many things better than phones whether they involve 3D stuff or not. But in the latter case, which I suspect will only get more prevalent moving forward, it's not even a fair comparison. A device with two displays can show real 3D objects, something no phone will ever be able to do. I'm not saying they'll be capable of that right from the start, but eventually they'll get there. And many, many new possibilities will open up. But as I said, this concept was limited by design. This is essentially a blueprint of how I think the first iterations of smart glasses could be like. If you want to see my vision for the future of the category, if you want to see how I think they could realistically replace phones, check this video out. I think you may find it interesting. Ciao!